All right then, so now we have this custom bill type right here using a struct with these properties and we have this function to generate a new bill object where we take in the name property which is a string and we return the bill object at the end. And we're calling that from the main file right here to generate this new bill. We have this new instance of the bill which we print to the console. Now, it would be good if we could also create functions or methods associated with bill objects with this type so that I could do something like this. I could say my bill, which is a bill object, dot, and then use a function, for example, format, which is gonna format the bill. And this format function would be associated with bill objects. Now we can do that. We can add methods this way by using what's known as receiver functions. So I'm gonna create a receiver function called format, which is gonna be associated with bill objects. So then how do we do this? Well, pretty simply, we just have to create a function as normal with one little change. So I'm gonna create this function to format the bill. So let me say format the bill. And we start with the func keyword. Then I'm gonna give this a name, format, like so. And it's gonna return a formatted string. So we'll specify the return type. So it's just like a normal function, right? But at the minute, anyone could call this function. Anyone could just say, you know, I wanna call the format function it's not associated with bill objects so how do we do that how do we associate it with it well this is where the receiver part steps in so what we do is add a second set of parentheses over here where we receive the bill object so we say not my bill sorry a bill type is received into this function and then we can access that inside this function with the variable b. So by doing this right here, by adding these parentheses and saying that we receive a bill into this function, now we're limiting this function only to bill objects. So it can only be called from a bill object now, just by doing this. So now I could say something like my bill, if we can spell this, dot format, like that. All right, and that would work now, but I can't just call format because it's not a function on its own anymore. It's just a function associated with bill objects. All right then, so we've associated it now using this and we can access the bill it was called on. So if I say mybill.format, then we get a copy of the my bill right here. And again, it is a copy of the bill. Just like when we take in arguments into functions, go creates a copy, it does the same thing in receiver functions for the item we use it on for the object we use it on all right then so what do we want to do inside this function well we want to cycle through the items inside the bill now i know there's none there at the minute but we're going to add in a couple of these let me just copy them from my repo and paste them in just so we've got some data to work with we're going to cycle through these items and we're going to format them so it says look we have a pie which is 5.99 a cake which is 3.99 etc and also at the end we're going to add up the total and add that to the string as well so that later on if we want to print it or save it to a file we can do so let's start out with a variable we'll call fs stands for formatted string and set that equal to a string now to begin with it's going to say bill breakdown like this and then a colon and then also a new line so that's going to be at the start of the formatted string. Now, I'm also going to create a variable called total, which is going to be type float64. And this is going to be set to be zero to begin with. So as we cycle through the items right here, we're going to add each item cost to the total. And then at the end, we're going to output that total. All right, so the next thing we want to do is list out the items inside this formatted string. So we need to add to this string. So I'm going to cycle through this map to do that. I'll say, first of all, a comment, list items, and then we're gonna use a for loop for the key and value, colon equals range, and then it's b.items, so the items property on the bill we take in. And inside here, I'm gonna say fs, which is the formatted string variable we have right here, and I wanna to add to that, so plus equals, and we're gonna use the sprint f method remember that returns to us a string a formatted string we saw that earlier so fmt dot sprint f like so now i've not imported this at the minute but if i save then vs code is going to auto import it for me 
All right, so inside here we have a string on the left and then over here on the right, any variables we want to output. Now we want to output the key, which is pie or cake, and also the value, which is the price. Now I'm going to add to this another bit of string and that is going to be a colon. So it's going to be like pie and then colon, cake and then colon. Now the reason I'm doing it here inside this value bit and not inside the string itself is going to become more clear later on when we work with padding. I will talk about it towards the end of this video. For now, let me just output it and we'll come back to that. So the key is going to be on the left of this little bit of string. So we'll do percent and then V to output that in default format. And then I'm going to say space dot 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 and then dollars to say this amount is going to be in dollars right here. And then we output percent V again. So we're outputting the key on the left and then the value, the price on the right. And we're cycling through the items and doing that for each item and adding it to this thing right here. Now, I also want to add on a new line after each item. So backslash and then N. All right, then. Now, I also want to take this value each time we iterate through this map and add it to the total. So we're keeping a running total as well. The way we do that is by saying total and then plus equals to V. All right, then. So now we have these extra pieces of strings added to this and also the total. The next thing I want to do is output the total line at the bottom. So we'll say total and then below that FS and plus equals to add to it fmt dot sprint f then inside here we're going to do a string and the variables we're going to pass in is going to be first of all a string in itself which says total colon and again i'm doing this for the same reason i added the colon right here so we can add spacing to this inside the string later on using special characters and i'm going to talk about that in a minute for now we'll output the total as well as the second volume so on the left, we want to output this thing. So I'm going to say percent V and then space dot dot dot. And then on the right dollar sign and then percent 0.2 F to say we want this output as a flow to two decimal places. OK, now the only thing left we need to do is return the string. So return FS and that's it. That's pretty much done. So now what I can do is call this format method on a bill object my bill now that returns to us a string which we're going to print to the console so let me get rid of that in fact we won't get rid of it we'll just add on the format method right here so instead of just printing out the bill we're printing out the formatted string that this method returns to us from the bill so let's give this a whirl i'm going to open it up in a console and run the files and hopefully we should see that Awesome, looks pretty good. So we get build breakdown, each of the items, and then the total at the bottom. So this all works. However, I wanna to return to these things right here. Now I wanna add some space into them so that these take up a lot more room. So there's like empty spaces on the right and then the prices are over here, all aligned. So the way we do that is by adding characters to these things right here. So what I could do is say minus 25 right here and minus 25 right here and what that does essentially is make this character or this value that we output right here 25 characters long so when we output it it's going to be 25 characters long and even though this only takes up four characters here it's going to fill the rest of the 25 characters with spaces so 21 empty spaces so now each one of these is going to be 25 characters long and it's going to push the prices over to the right so if I save this now and preview again, let me try this, that looks a lot better. Now, this is the reason I added the colon here, because if I didn't, let me add the colon here after the value and save it, run it again. You're going to see the colon over on the right after the spacing. And I don't want that. I want it on the left before the spacing. So I made it part of the value. OK, and that's the same reason I added this as a value over here. So I could add space into it using this. Hope that makes sense. OK, then now if this was plus 25, then the spaces would be to the left of these things right here. Let me just demo that. Run the files and we can see the spacing is now over here. 
I want to make the spacing on the right, so I did minus 25 like so, and that looks better. All right then, my friends, so now we have a receiver function or a method associated with bill objects. That's how we create these receiver functions, and we can create as many as we want, and we're going to create more in the next couple of lessons.